The word design means different things to different people. Often it's associated with how things look. Often it's used as a noun, as in that's a good design. But really, it's a verb. It's not an it, it's a how. It's a way of doing things, it's a way of thinking. And above all, it's a way of thinking creatively. Design to me is really taking ideas and turning them into a practical reality. The process of taking that idea and turning it into metal or plastic or a physical object is design. Everything around us has been designed, from our latest digital app to the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the buildings we live and work in, much of the food and drink we consume, the TV programmes we watch, even the deodorant we spray. They've all been designed. They've all been made. It's design and technology that makes the world work, that turns ideas into reality. And that's super critical to successful innovation, and therefore the future prosperity and economic health of the UK. Indeed, last year, the UK's engineering, manufacturing and creative industry sectors were together worth £500 billion, with the creative industry sector growing last year by 10%, three times more than the wider UK economy. The spark that ignited so much excellence in our creative industries was the revolutionary inclusion of design and technology in the first national curriculum in 1989. Design and technology is a phenomenally important subject. Logical, creative and practical, it's the only opportunity students have to apply what they've learned in maths and physics, directly preparing them for a career in engineering. Since the introduction of design and technology in the 1990s, there's been a clear correlation between the numbers of people taking D&T and the increases in further and higher education going on to engineering and other subjects related to D&T. The link between D&T and engineering and the creative industries is clear and obvious. And yet, amazingly, that stream is being systematically throttled by a government whose right hand champions innovation creative industries, while its seemingly unconnected left hand is systematically washing the innovation baby away with the educational bathwater. So what's the problem? Since 2004, the number of students taking GCSE design and technology in schools has fallen by half to 225,000. I think design technology is having a bit of a difficult uh, period at the minute and it is not easy to find design technology teachers. Measures such as Progress 8, measures such as the e baccalaureate brought in by the government are destroying design technology in schools. In September 2016, we will have at least 2,000 fewer teachers than we need. And with training bursaries half the value of those given to mathematics and science trainee teachers, numbers and quality will continue to decline face a crippling future skills shortage. The latest estimates predict that we will need over 1.8 million new engineers in the decade leading up to 2022, and a further 1 million people to fill new creative jobs by 2030. In the world marketplace, we are as good as any of our competitors, if, if not better. I think design and technology is it is important that it carries on as a, as a proper subject and, and not disappear. How we manage without it, I don't, I don't think we could manage without it. So what can be done to put this right? We need to change school accountability measures to include a creative and technical subject. We need to equalise bursaries across subjects to encourage more entrance into design and technology teach training. Exam regulators need to ensure that the imminent new d and qualifications have credibility and value with universities and employers. We need to promote a wider understanding of design and technology within government to recognise its value to career paths in engineering and the creative industries. And government should require Ofsted to inspect and recognise d and contribution to young people's learning. If you don't give design and technology the same sort of standing as every other subject in the school, you're going to end up with a generation of kids who don't know what's possible. And that will end up with us having a shortage of people who, who want to do it and have the background to be able to do it. And that would be a tragedy.